Howdy, me Flowbart here, and a little bit different kind of video, and not really going to focus in on what we're doing on the screen here, just wanted to have something visible on the screen while actually talking. And as you can see by the title here, for gamers and game devs and just people in general, and it's for potato avoidance, and what exactly does that mean? As a gamer, I like to play games, who doesn't? and you know developing games as well there's a lot of time that's spent sitting behind a keyboard or for some people a console um, or whatever and all that time is spent actually playing games or working on games or doing whatever even if you're just watching a bunch of YouTube or you know whatever doesn't matter um, spending all that time in front of a computer or in one place being stationary is going to begin to take its toll and as many of you know um, I'm no spring chicken I'm getting older and well lack of movement is always going to be a problem and the less that you do the less you're able to do so I kinda wanted to bring that to to the, the focus of this video the more you sit in front of that console or, or computer or game or whatever, the less you're going to be able to do because you're going to start getting less and less energy. And if you didn't already have depression, then <laughs> you're going to end up with depression. Um, and that's a problem. The fact of having depression is going to just compound everything and make it worse. So what I wanted to do was just kind of point out a few things that um, could potentially help you out a little bit. And these are things that I do and things that I'm going to start doing more of or start doing. And first is physical fitness. Sitting around, your body is going to get stagnant and you're not going to have much energy. You're going to lose strength and little simple things like getting up and going to the bathroom or walking out to get the mail or for people like myself who or sit here you know you know and don't do anything but sit here and work on stuff and sit behind a computer you know 8 10 12 14 18 hours as much as 20 plus hours at a time trying to work on stuff um, it can really take its toll so one of the first things that I did was I got a pair of dumbbells. And no, I'm not referring to people that I know on Discord. Um, they're cheap weights. You can find them anywhere. You can go to Walmart, the dollar store. You can go to wherever. I mean, lots of places sell these little dumbbells. And they don't have to be, you know, really, really heavy. You can start off light and progress later as you go. But even starting light, uh, the ones that I have are, I think, six and a half pounds. And they were just some that were sitting around the house. And what I do is, whenever I'm at a stalemate, I get in here and like, okay, I'm working on something. And, okay, how do I do this? If I have time to sit back and scratch my head, I can just reach down. I keep them next to my chair. I reach down, I grab a hold of those dumbbells, and... I'll do arm raises or curls or I do a different uh, type each time that I do it. And that's going to help develop your arms a little bit better and things are going to, you know, you're, you'll start getting your strength back up. Um, with that, another thing, as you are on a game level that you can't beat or you're trying to diagnose a problem or Unreal Engine 4 is just being Unreal Engine 4 and just doing weird things um, get up walk outside walk around if you live in a house walk around the outside of your house once um, just do something to get up and walk around stretch your legs a little bit so that um, you're getting some movement in your legs as well doesn't seem like any of this should have to be mentioned but it, it should be because a lot of people who get like me with bad levels of depression sitting around doing nothing again the less that you do the less you're able to do so get up walk around a little bit and uh, get some exercise in your legs um, get some dumbbells they're usually pretty cheap under ten dollars in most cases and 
exercise your arms a little bit. Exercise your brain. If you're playing the same game over and over and over again, if it's just mindless, same thing over and over, try something different. Play a different game. Well, I don't know, get away from the game and actually go outside and do something. Um, I'm guilty of neglecting the house or the yard um, and not taking care of the, the yard the way that I should. So spend some time working on your yard. Uh, make it look good. Even if you don't spend much time out there, if you're just a total recluse and don't like going outside, it's still um, it's good to get out there and take care of that because it helps with your, your physical strength and well-being. Um, your diet. Diet is another big uh, thing. It's so easy to run to the uh, refrigerator and grab a soda or, um, you know, get a cup of coffee. I mean, I, I actually had to remove, I used to have a Keurig coffee maker sitting on my desktop. Yes, I had a coffee maker on my desktop and I kept jugs of water next to my desktop. So I had plenty of water so that I could actually refill and make my coffee. I didn't even have to get up out of my chair and move my big butt to go get a cup of coffee. Um, I actually took it out and I put it back into the kitchen. So now I actually have to get up and walk a whole whopping 30 feet to get to the kitchen so that I can make a cup of coffee. Um, little things like that. But if you're gonna drink coffee or if you're gonna drink any caffeinated beverages, then you need to take into account that caffeine is a substance that will dehydrate you. So if you drink one cup of wa wa uh, coffee, you need to drink at least two cups of water the same size. You need double the water versus the amount of coffee that you intake to keep your body hydrated. Hydration is very important. Um, skip a few extra sodas per day and drink a glass of water. Uh, I'm not going to sit here and preach about how much you should drink every day. Everybody's body is a little bit different on how much water intake they need to have. So at least keep that rule of thumb. If you drink anything that's not a glass of water, drink the same amount of liquid at least back in water that same day to be able to kind of compensate for it. Um, so watch your diet. Don't don't keep snack foods next to your desk or your, your console or whatever. Having easy access to food means you're going to sit there and, and munch on things. And if you have easy access to that food, you're going to do it. You're going to grab that bag of chips or box of crackers or something of that nature. And try looking at snacks that are, you know, if you're going to nervous eat or whatever, then try finding stuff that is actually less bad for you. A stick of celery or, I mean, even the right kind and brand of pretzels you know something that requires usually more calories to consume than what they provide watch your calorie intake um, so just little things like that with your diet if you sit in front of the, the computer or the console and I'm guilty of this I won't get up and eat sometimes I will actually sit here working on stuff for eight hours and then realize, oh crap, I haven't eaten anything yet at all today. Well, that's not good for you. Ignoring your diet is just as bad as not actually eating the right foods. So you need to eat, you need to eat regular meals, try to get your body on a schedule so that you're actually able to um, maintain a better intake of food. Okay, so I'm going to keep on moving past there. And we've talked about getting a regular maintained diet, um, not having snack foods directly in front of you so you can constantly be munching around and, and having stuff to, to constantly munch on. Um, if you're wondering what the asset pack is that I'm running around looking at the, um, the overview map on, this is from the Simple Apocalypse Interiors. I figured, hey, what the heck, you know, some cr pretty cool looking stuff that might be able to be used with the polygon assets. And yes and no, the scale of the items is absolutely different from the polygon scale. So anything you decide to put into the map, you're going to have to scale down. Like uh, this bed here, I can't even jump up onto the bed. It's probably a collision issue, but I can't get onto the bed. If you want a sweet race car bed, then there you go. But... Yeah, 
Um, spend less time in front of the computer. Get up. Socialize with somebody if you can. Get on Discord channel, what have you. Um, get your mind off of what you're doing because your brain is going to be a, a problem as well. If you're doing the same repetitive stuff constantly, then your brain's just not going to grow and you're not going to absorb things and you're going to lose some of your mental acuities. Um, myself, I have my own series of health issues. I have sleep apnea. I have... Um, uh, that bothers me to where it actually wakes me up because what happens is I stop breathing in the middle of the night and it wakes me up. Hope that's a good thing that it wakes me up when I stop breathing. Uh, it's better than the alternative of not waking me up when I stop breathing. Um, I have a deformity in my legs that is partially from birth defect that um, has a bowing of my legs. And what that means to me is if I stand up for more than 10 or 15 minutes at a time, I'm in pretty fair amount of pain. Um, also, about 15 years ago, um, while working for an industrial plant, it was a recycling plant, and I'll explain this story, so hopefully you'll get another understanding of, of me in general. Um, I was m the floor manager, and my job was to maintain the entire plant systems to make sure that all of the settings were correct. And what we did was we took car tires, and we would recycle them into rubberized products like um, floor mats or um, we could even turn them into grains of sand. So you imagine taking a tire and converting it and chopping it and grinding it down to the size of a um, grain of sand and what all was involved. We had a primary lift mechanism where a truck would be brought in and they would disconnect the tractor from the trailer open up the doors naturally and they would just tip up the whole trailer and dump all of them into a giant hopper. That hopper would then feed up into a uh, ramp that would slide it out into a sorting station where we'd have a couple guys there to sort the tires to make sure there was no tires that were too big to run through the system. Like no big truck tires. It all had to be car tires and things of that nature. Big truck tires would have to be cut in half and then put back into the system. But then from that sorting table they would run through a conveyor that picked up any excessive metal that it might have been at that point. They're then dropped into a primary shredder which would then take a full size car tire and cut it into a little four inch chunk. It then was passed into a, another lift system that passed into a cryo tunnel using liquid nitrogen that would freeze it and believe it was like negative 235 degrees below zero which is centigrade I believe also. So that's really really cold so it would super freeze the the items in this long cryo tunnel then they would be dropped into what's called a hammer mill. The hammer mill essentially was 96 uh, steel blades that were rectangular shaped about three quarters of an inch thick six inches long and like three and a half inches wide these 96 blades were on a giant drum spinning at a high RPM. The rubber that's frozen solid is dropped into it and they're smashed into little little shards. Then it went off to sifting tables that would sort it out by different size and go out to different bagging stations where it will be bagged based on their sizes. Well, what happened was, and that was a cool system. It worked. It worked pretty well. We tweaked it and got it working and making good product. Well, myself and one other person came in early we were initially only able to run one shift per day we got to where we could run two shifts per day and we had quadrupled the amount of output in just a short amount of time of this plant system well myself you needed a instead of a cool down period you needed a warm up period so we had to have at least a two hour gap in between the night shift and the day shift and the day shift and the night shift. We had at least two two hour breaks throughout the daytime so that the system could actually thaw out a little bit because it would get sheets of ice eight inches thick on some of the machinery because of all the liquid nitrogen. Well, we decided we were going to try to make some really killer numbers that day and two of us came in early and instead of it being a dozen people trying to run this plant, there was two of us to run a plant 
that was needed for, you know, a dozen people. Well, when these bags fill up at the changing station, sorting stations, then you have to use a forklift because there were 2,000 pounds of rubber being put in these bags. So somebody had to run a forklift and then somebody had to tie off the top of the bag, pull it out, quickly put another bag in there, put the nozzle of uh, the bag back up so you didn't spill a bunch of product on the ground. Well, that's one thing. One person has to keep an eye on the sorting table. Another person has to uh, keep an eye on the system to make sure that the, the flow of liquid nitrogen is correct and the temperature and the RPMs. And, and that was my job with systems administration to make sure the entire plant was running at peak performance. Well, with only two people trying to do the job of about 10 or 12, we were both running back and forth. And the primary hopper where all the tires were dumped into where it comes up and then slides down this big steel ramp to a sorting station, a tire got caught up in that primary lift, which is a conveyor belt that's very similar to the tracks on a bulldozer. So it had blades sticking up. And um, what happened was, as it brought one up, it was a small thin tire, it folded it, tucked it back up underneath, and it would have ended up burning up the motor. So I hit the kill switch on that conveyor Without skipping a beat, I climbed up to the top of this machine, almost 30 feet up, and no safety equipment, like an idiot, but I'm sitting there pulling and trying to pry and, and pull this tire out, and now I've pulled the kill switch, so the kill switch should make sure the machine doesn't start back up as soon as I get the tire free. Well, as soon as the tire did get free, um, apparently the safety switch was broken, and the conveyor system started turning again and my foot just my right foot just happened to be in the way and it grabbed a hold of my right foot and squeezed it in between the ramp that they slide down and the conveyor blades um, my foot if you were to measure it from the bottom of the sole of my boot to the top of my boot would be about three and a half inches four inches tall well, that was compressed down into a gap of roughly one inch to one and a half inches. Um, pretty crappy. And thankfully, because of the way that it was turning, after only a few seconds, it actually released my foot and I was able to get my foot out of the way. Any smaller of a gap, it would have actually cut off the end of my foot. I would have gone into shock as I fell into the slide then would have been passed into the shredder and cut into little four inch pieces into a bloody mass uh, which would then have gone into the cryo tunnel and frozen to 235 degrees below zero centigrade and then passed into the hair mills and shattered into little pieces and separated into the appropriate sized bags nobody would have ever known that i had disappeared at that point perfect way to dispose of a body right so what did happen since it did crush my foot it was excruciating amount of pain and I fell backwards onto the slide into the chute and slid down onto the sorting table and was able to get my myself together and roll off of the, the sorting uh, area and onto the floor or else I would have gone into the shredder and um, was able to hobble across and I'm trying to yell and of course you can't yell across a, a noisy plant like that so it was pretty rough I managed to get over there, we shut the systems down, and about that time is when the other shift was starting to come in, and I ended up getting um, somebody to take care of me to the emergency room, and there you go. I spent the next year and a half on crutches, and learning how to walk again on a messed up foot. So between that accident and falling off the machine, injuring my back, injuring my leg, injuring my foot, and having the birth defect in my legs, Walking is no, not a really good thing. It's no bueno. It's not very good. So I have to force myself to walk to get that little bit of exercise. Well, that just leads me into why I wanted to make this video, and that's to try to get people to think about what they're doing instead of spending so much time directly behind a computer or a console to actually take some time to get up, walk around, and think about their health a little bit more. Myself, I'm going to spend some more time outside doing yard work this week. Um, I'm going to be using my dumbbells. I use them every day um, to try to work my arms a little bit. Um, watching my weight, avoiding sodas as much as possible, and avoiding coffee as much as possible. I love coffee. I really do. But 
remember, if you're going to drink anything with caffeine in it, balance it out. One cup of coffee, you need to drink at least two cups of water to match the amount of coffee that you drink because the, the caffeine will dehydrate you. So, with that, we're going to close out this part of the stream and what I'll probably end up doing is I will discuss a few more things about the Cinti Studios Polygon and Simple stuff and using them and that kind of rigmarole. But I just wanted to have this video to come out and, and say, you know what, if you're going to be a gamer or a game developer, think about your health a little bit more. If you're suffering from depression, try to make some friends. Get on my Discord channel. If you have problems, reach out to us. You know, if you just need someone to talk to, you're, you're bummed out or depressed or whatever else, I'm stuck in front of this damn computer 14, 16 hours a day anyway. Might as well, you know, be there to help other people while I can. You know, I, I take it as my, my personal thing. I'm not trying to fix the world. I'm not trying to make the world a better place. Um, hell, I'm trying to make video games to make more people get sucked in to start playing video games. So, <laughs> vicious cycle, right? All right, guys, thanks for watching, and like I said, in the next stream here shortly, I will discuss more of the uh, the Polygon stuff and usages and setup and whatnot. So thanks for watching, and we'll see you again here shortly.